right now we are going to start talking about feng shui your living room. So your living room is the space that you do spend a lot of time in chilling, relaxing with your loved ones, watching TV, you know, so the living room is a really lived in space. It is a very important part of feng shui and actually there's not very many things that you have to do with your living room. Typically, it is one of the areas that is pretty straightforward. And even when I'm looking at someone's house, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Couch has to go there. The, the, the TV will only kind of end up in one place. So this is very um, simple and easy. What I'm gonna to do today is a little change from our typical videos, is this is going to be a little snapshot of my own living room. So you're gonna see me in my own living room sharing the insights of how you can feng shui your living room. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and you will get notified when my video is released. I have so much information that I just cannot wait to share with you about feng shui and to help really skyrocket your life and your home to next levels that you couldn't even imagine. When I recorded the living room, I actually was just in my own living room and we have an inbuilt fireplace um, and we don't have actually a mantelpiece over our fire. It's just the way that it's built. It's the stove that's in the house. So there's no mantelpiece. And this is something that I've seen in many houses over the years that I definitely don't recommend in your home. So on your fireplace, we do not recommend having family photos. Like what? It's the perfect place to put pictures. <laughs> It might seem like the perfect place to put pictures, but if you have been tuning into any of my feng shui videos, you will hear about the potency and the power of the fire element and how the fire element can burn, can destroy, can create arguments, it can, you know, increase overeating. It has a it's a very strong element, just like I'm happen to be wearing some red today. Um, so what I would say is over the fireplace, the mantelpiece, we don't recommend um, family photos. First of all, because the fire is underneath them and that can create this agitation and friction among family members and relationships if they have them on over the fireplace. Now, even if the fire is not there, so the intention of that space is that the, there's a fire underneath it. So there's, even if the fire is not there, I still don't recommend having them there. And then I would say to you, um, what, well, what do you put up there? I would put up things that don't have an emotive value, like that there's no, like, it's not a person, you know, so no spiritual pictures, no gurus, no family photos. And then after that, you could put paintings or imagery or, you know, up there, it's fine. Um, other candles, ornaments, all are fine. But just purse people, we would not recommend on the mantelpiece. This was really shown up very strongly for um, a client of mine came back into our community and was sharing the story of visiting her friend. And her friend had just redecorated her whole living room. And after a glass or two of wine, the friend confessed to, the, to my client that herself and her husband, for some reason, after being together for 16 years, had just started bickering and fighting way more than ever. And she was a little bit concerned about it. Now, my client, who's very well educated and knows the do's and don'ts of feng shui, said, so how long has this been happening? Like, is it since you did up the room? And the woman was like, yeah, actually, just around that time. When she redecorated her living room, she thought it would be a really nice idea for them to put a picture of herself and her husband over the fire. And she got their wedding photo, a big picture of her wedding portrait, and had it up over the fireplace. And from that day until um, my client visited, they'd been, they'd been having these little disagreements that were not normal in their relationship. Needless to say, my client advised her, I think you should replace the picture of the two of you. This is what my feng shui teacher says. And, it has diff and I got the report back saying it had definitely made a difference. So um, we just sometimes don't realize, even when we're changing things around our house or our living room, how it could just literally have an impact on our relationships or you know, our finances very quickly. So if you've enjoyed this little snippet, 
go see, watch and check out the rest of the Feng Shui mini course where you see my own living room. And um, you can also sign up to see the rest of those trainings that will give you a much deeper dive into all areas of the home. And um, if you are wondering about why would you do feng shui like why do it what what's the point like is it not just moving furniture well in the in the the feng shui mini course you will learn more about the deeper levels of it but for me it is all about the success it's all about the wins that i've seen of my clients when they have brought their home on board and in balance to support them with creating a much more fulfilling abundant and joyful life you can hear some of those stories here and hopefully that will nudge you in the right direction to take action and start feng shui your living room and maybe even more so we ended up constructing this wall here and creating a living room and it actually gives us so much more coziness than um, we used to have it kind of really very open and not as welcoming or cozy it also does that other thing of creating that beautiful entrance where we can walk in and have a beautiful painting now coming up on our wall and um, i can anchor in that prosperity area as well the other thing was the coffee table so we have the round coffee table. The coffee table is actually made from metal and intentionally metal. Metal is one of the elements that we use for balancing the home and believe it or not this is um, a very beautiful coffee table but it's also one of the feng shui remedies in our home and in our living room and nobody's gonna know. <laughs> so I love uh, doing feng shui and it's kind of like being almost undercover so that people come in, they see the coffee table, they don't know it's our feng shui remedy, I do, and that it's harmonizing and balancing the home very easily here for us in our health and well-being area in our home. I did want to talk a little bit about this because this is part of our living room but actually our family area is over here in the corner and I have this cute statue that I just love. I love this because it really does represent um, you know family and people coming together and it's beautiful and symbolic but if someone coming into this house you know as a guest and um, they come and see the house they just think, oh, that's a nice statue. But for me, symbolically, it is in this area that is our family and community, and it kind of symbolizes that energy in the home. And um, we also just have some nice books and a globe. The globe possibly could be in a better position for us for in our travel area, but it doesn't seem to actually fit or suit that area. So it's here, and it's still gonna anchor in myself and Ken's world travel. I came home one day and there was a letter from the bank and I, I was like, the bank is never good news from the mor our mortgage company, you know. And I opened it up and I was reading it and I was scanning it and about halfway down it, there was like, please find check and closed. And I was like, what? what? Basically, I mean, they sent us a check for 1300 quid. My partner was working in a job. He'd been there for 15 years and was just so stressed. And my intention was for him to get a new job. The job he'd wanted for the last two years had just advertised for a position. So he put in the application and by the end of that week, he had the job. Being in my space just like feels really yummy. I just like, oh, I freaking love my apartment. Like it's so amazing. 